Hi, I don't know if you've ever been to Romney Marsh, it's the largest, the largest desert in the UK. <coughs> uh, not really a desert, it's a, it's a largely reclaimed piece of land called Romney Marsh. It's drained, it's very flat and it's, it seems to be um, on the beach, or a huge beach. It's, it's all shingle and bits of grass, whatever grows, and a collection of shacks, houses, uh, all seem to have been built by the owners. But anyway, it's right next to Dungeon SB nuclear power station. And it's a very desirable area for wildlife and, and uh, just, the, the, just the joy of uh, the wide open spaces, really. It's very popular as a, as a place to live, even though these, some of these are no more, more than big garden, garden sheds. Uh, and it was a very lovely day. We, we went there yes, yesterday morning. We were in Bex Hills with friends for the weekend. I don't like to advertise the fact that we were away. So I haven't done any painting since last, last Friday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday morning. It's now Tuesday more, uh, afternoon. Oh dear, we, uh, I started the car, it was going to be a very uh, cold night last night, so I thought well, I'd start the car, and having not used it, I don't use it very much anyway. And the battery was as flat as a flounder. <clears throat> I'd left the side light on for side lights on for 48 hours, uh, flattened the battery. It's not the first time I've done this. So off we went, me and my pal with his, in his car to Halfords to get a couple of jump leads. His, his uh, uh, broken long ago. So we managed to get the car started. But this morning, after a very heavy frost, it, did, it hadn't charged up enough. So nothing worked. So it was jump started again. Left the car running and it's fine. We got back to London, no problem. But I've got a spare battery that I used to use for my camping trailer to run the the water pump, and uh, it's uh, working fine now. So I can tell you if I need a charge tomorrow morning when I start it. Another cold night. I've got a spare battery that'll be fully charged. That should be okay. And then I might have to change the battery. But, Right, okay, so enough about about that. I hope you enjoyed your holiday, your, your New Year celebrations, etc. Uh, so what we've got is it's just wild ground, really, very barren, just grasses and and thistles and stuff like that, and, and wildflowers, of course, in season. Uh, I'm not doing the power station. It's just the flatness that I want to try to capture here. And if you're watching... Uh, Michelle, with your new Ron Ransom hake. Good luck. Well, you said wish me luck, but uh, it's not really luck, is it? It's just getting used to the amount of water that this brush holds. So I'm going to do uh, to a wet in wet, but I'm going to paint the wet around, okay, around these buildings. I don't want those to be too uh, wet. So uh, let's just go around there, bit down there, bit down there, over there, bit down there. Okay, get that across there like that. Now we can go into the foreground. This is mostly foreground. So I'm going to try to show show a good way to, to show a lot of the foreground. You might see them wet. Okay, so let's use a bit of Rossiana to warm it up. It was a beautiful day yesterday. It's a lovely day now, but it's very cold. I've my woolly hat on. Well, as you know, I haven't got much, much in the way of cover. So we're just looking at a low horizon here. So we'll put a bit of blue in that. Let's just go over the whole lot with the raw sienna. Yeah, I think people get these hakes because I'm them, I am, and Stephen Cronin used a hake and think, well, it's easy, and they get one and give up after a couple of goes because they can't do it. It takes a while to get used to. It's a, it's a wonderful brush. It's well worth the effort, but you just have to practice. There's no shortcut. 
It's just practice, practice, practice. The more you do, the better you get. And And the rewards will come. Right, let's put a bit of blue in this now. So we've got a bit, bit of nice blue. That'll do. That's just to try to show that lovely day. Now I'm going to put in a, 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 a very faint, warmish sort of colour. Color. Now this is all shingle, right? but I'm going to show it as, as uh, planes of, of grass. So let's go in with some nice Payne's grey, bit of bit of sienna, bit of yellow, nice dark. <coughs> I uh, keep my paste quite moist. Put this in, but as it dries, you can go over it with some dry brush. But I just want to get some texture in the whole lot. Lots of sort of little shadow areas, wild bits and pieces. It's warming up as we're coming. There are three um, of these small shacks, sheds. There's an art uh, studio, selling art, wood cuts, or lino cuts. I don't know. It just cries out for, for art. And, and I photographed the house of, where Derek Jarman used to live. He was a British painter, film producer, and he died young of AIDS, sadly. Oh, let's put this on the horizon. Now, very near here, behind these houses, runs the the, the high dim church to Dungeon SB Narrow Gauge Railway, which is an absolutely superb, beautiful. We were sitting in a large cafe, it's all quite new, where the the final destination so the train stops there all the passengers get off and they've got this lovely cafe to go and enjoy some eats and we're giving away free mince pies which I've over ordered for Christmas. Alright okay let's keep that going. It's all, all essentially green here, greenish, shadowy. But it's an amazing area. I've never been there. We've, We've been on the side in Folkestone, we can't, there are many times with those trailers. Wonderful. And, and Bexhill, many times, because our friends live there. They used to live near us in Wellington, but they went to Bexhill. Right, let's get some nice darker bits of stuff here. Right, this is, I'll go let that dry a bit before we go over that with, a, with some more texture. So I keep it as simple as possible, now the paper's a bit twisty. Let's just stretch it. I could dry the hair dry. Right, let's uh, get that one stretch there. It. There's no need to, to pre-stretch your paper or shrink it. Okay, <coughs> we've got a lot to to go on there, so let's 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 put in some some of this. Scrape out some with a fingernail or plastic card. Just looking at the photograph. I took quite a few photographs, a couple of Charman's house. I don't know that much about him, but I know it's an artist's par uh, paradise. And, uh, this area with the power station in the background has been filmed many, many times. A lot of documentaries on it from time to time, on, mostly on BBC. Uh, right, I reckon I'm going to try that. So mute your your sound, go. Oh, 
over the years there's been a lot of quarrying for the uh, for the um, aggregate the or the shingles pebbles um, and there are some very very large well large by English standards lakes from the quarrying quarrying and it's, although it's flatland it's very very good for wildlife birds lots of uh, bird watchers uh, now these roofs they're, they're sort of, mostly they're, they're well they're all sorts of shing wooden shingles or the asphalt type roofing felt so I'm going to use a I'm going to mix a bit of sienna and a bit of bit of blue I think and be brush I'll just get a bit of water on the brush this is an inch flat so I will uh, just Water on the brush. A bit of resin now, I think. Why not? This paper ain't got very flat in there. Probably because I left a lot of it unpainted, like these the, around the houses or the shacks. Uh, let's get some grey on some of that. Okay, two for one. That's uh, quite an amazing array of buildings. Little that have sort of just gone up DIY, but they're not. I mean, they're, they're very desirable place if you like remote living. I'm going to lift out some of the some of that for a window. Oh, let's get a nice ready darkish. I'll lift the window. Yeah, I'll, I'll draw the windows, but I'm going to lift them out. I think it might be easier to do. I'll put this bit of, this, bit of a shadow in under there. And a bit lighter on the roof. There's a, a lighter one there. Let's put this other roof in here. I'm going to dry off a bit. Like the sheds in front of sheds. Ah, get that more ready. There's a shed, sort of, I'm looking at a photograph, sort of a shed there with a Slightly pitch roof, and then difficult to see from the photograph. And that roof is quite a grey like grey. So I'll put them with a little bit of blue, right? Try and leave a margin there. Don't want that sky to, I mean that roof to disappear into the rest of it. So let's do that one there. So we'll have that ready. It's darker than the roof, especially at the top of the, the underneath there. Right, let's just drag some of that down there. Okay, that gives a bit of contrast there. That's a bit, a bit more in there. Right, so... Remember that uh, burnt sienna and the Payne's Grey give a lovely, rich, warm, dark. Let's put that in there, the dark. And let's have that dark 
there, I think. I'll use a different brush. So I'll use me half, half inch. Uh, I'll try to make them look different, different in tone, although they're not really. So I've got to try to show the shapes. Let's make that one dark. So like a shed in front. Any ridge tiles, ridge. Okay, coming on. There's a it's a sort of a, a chin, these are chimneys from log burners, coal burners, gas burners, central heating, gas central I don't know what they do for heat. I didn't ask anybody, so let's just put a bit of, there are some little bits of tree and there you go. That's a form of the texturing now. Now they want dark, green, darky green, Payne's grey, plenty of lemon yellow. And then we can paint some of these little shadowy bits in. And then as we come down to the foreground we can show bits of shadow. Just push the hake. Whatever makes the shape or the texture that you want, just use, you can use anything to do that. Well, a bit more wet, a bit more dark, a bit more warmy green. There are some like, fencing posts of jaunty angles which we'll uh, put in. Varied colours. We're just creating an impression, not painting portraits of thistles or grass, we're just trying to create an impression to make it easy for ourselves. Not a neat paint's grey here. Yeah. Oh, the screen's gone blank. Oh, we've got some. Nice shadow in here. So we'll put it in because it, it's an unremarkable patch of ground but beautiful all the same. Yeah. Put some lighter stuff in here. Catching a bit of light. Try to represent the clumps. So much of it is just heavily grasses, very uneven ground. We've got to do a bit more of these buildings here. So I've kept them as simple as I possibly can. Uh, so we'll put the same sort of mix. Okay, now um, there are also some telegraph poles. I'll get a bit of tissue and I'll just 
stretch a little bit of that roof out there. A little bit of shadow on the side of the side of the um, metal chimney. Well, it's not particularly straight, but I do. All right, the same. The other one. I've probably done that the wrong side. Right, okay. Uh, let's have a go with the telegraph poles. So I use my inch flat. Uh, so we'll uh, just let you out. Uh, ah, that's gone badly wrong. Right, I'll have to repaint that. And then start again. Back to that. Uh, there's one up there. Oh. A big one there. I'll put them in because they're just bit points of interest, and there's one behind there, and there's one there. Oh. And then we'll uh, use a, a rigger, I think. Or shall we? No, it's just. Nice. And that one comes all the way up to. I'll put this one in there. And I'll edge it out in a minute. So that one comes, these ones come down. There. I'm not making a good job of it, but oops. Oh well. I'm about to get rid of a bit of that. I see. Right, I was going to do some windows and things. Uh, let's just just etch out. I'm guessing these a little bit. <coughs> There's a door in here. One of those stable doors. Okay, a few more details. A little bit of light there. What's issue? That's not quite dry there. So we've got a bit of a, a window in here. There. Uh, I think there's a window there. all over the place. All little tiny ones.
don't know if I could have done that with a ruler really. Probably could have done it better with a pen, pen, pencil. Alright, uh, let's put that. Some detail in here. And that shed there. Oh, I'll just straighten that window up there. Let's get that back if I can just take that side of that pole off of there. I'm going to shut that side. Oh, I fiddled with that one a bit, that's not very good, is it? Right, uh, I've got some little bits of this weird window in here. Just guess those. Uh, well, I think that's, that's more or less it. So let's just clean that bit up there. Put in some some posts. Put in here donkey's ears. Um, I I don't think I can do much more than that. I could put some little bits of some things that are just sort of you know, sort of fireplaces that have never had the house built around them. That sort of thing. That was started not finished. It's just a little bits of so those building things, the bricks and all sorts. Unless you know it, I can't really describe it very well. I can show you some pictures on it, but maybe I will. Uh, right, I'll pity about, about that. I'll put it in a mouth and we'll have a, we'll have a look. Alright, okay. So, there we go. So, I always have a two Uh, yeah, that, 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 one, that one too. That, I, I think these are a bit overwhelming. I should have done those with a with a fine pencil, or, or a fine pencil, but a pencil. Uh, right, okay. Let's uh, lift the board up a little bit. See so what I've done. I've kept the detail to an absolute minimum. Let's wind this down. Because the, the the detail is really in the in the clumps and the shadows and yeah that that's okay. Well, I'll see. If I, I'll find you some pictures. Well, this is one I was working from. This uh, just I'm oh, sorry about the reflections and it's very very bright today. All right, so. There's this one here. That's what I've just done, but it, 
that's his sort of, I don't know what the, that post was there. There's a lighthouse, and then there's a big power station. Uh, let's uh, see if we can find another one. This is what it's like, look. And then we've got, uh, let's see if we can find. There's Derek Jarman's house. He's got yellow framed painted windows. Yeah, that's where he lived till he died. Look him up on uh, Google. Derek Jarman, J A R M A N. <coughs> he died, I think, 56. He was very young. Sad. But there are all these yellow frames, it's owned by someone else now. But it's kept as a sort of a, a monument, if you like. But I think he got fed up with people just gawping and just coming up and uh, walking around it. So, so there we are. That's it. That's uh, a little bit, a little bit of uh, of uh, Romney Marsh near Dungeness Power Station. Uh, an impression of a photograph I took twenty four hours ago. 26 hours ago. So I hope you got something from that. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.